prospect that if our countries are really serious to become democratic, to have the right development policies within a period of 10 years, we'll be able to absorb many of our citizens into productive employment by just mere processing of our natural products. Now, your third question is uh, Edward Francis Small Hospital. Obviously, this is supposed to be the apex referral hospital. Of course, it's in a horrible state. It's a horrible state. Yeah. Too so, many in, one, in one particular ward. It's horrible. it's horrible. In fact, the dialysis unit was really problematic. I, uh, even before coming, there was a lady whose mother passed away because of, of, of the same problem and decided to establish a foundation we will collect quite a lot of things and all she wants is for government at least to be paying some of the, uh, uh, the, the freights and things of that nature so that they will be supplied with that because in the absence of that is going to Senegal to purchase at very expensive prices. So many Gambians are definitely organized to, to try to assist. I believe that uh, the ministry, uh, I'm sure when we return, uh, one of the questions we'll raise in the National Assembly is precisely that how they can cooperate with Gambians abroad <coughs> so that they can build up a support system to improve the conditions of our hospitals. Uh, that is absolutely essential. Uh, definitely all of us must concentrate because it's a life and death issue. <laughs> The next on the line is Angelic. Thank you. Welcome again. All my questions have been answered, but I have only one more. Uh, what you people want to do uh, doing with the crime rate in Gambia right now? We have been hearing many crimes being happening there, rape, rob, and breaking. For me, they have stolen, they have break my house and stolen my things. And nothing happens. People are saying that it was safer in the past regime, but not now. What do you plan to do about it? Well, you know, uh, people will express a lot of opinion, and I constantly emphasize that to people. Uh, I don't know what they mean is safer before than now, because there's a theory that has been developed that uh, democracy comes with softness, and therefore people feel that they can do anything. I'm not sure that is not just simply uh, stigmatization. Just as people say, you are sitting here drinking attire. You know, that's very common for people to say. And when you speak to the Gambian youth, you see the ambition, people are dying in the back way because they see their parents and they want to do anything, you know, to, to, to remove their parents from poverty. But the description given to the Gambian youth is that he's just sitting there having no ambition drinking attire, which obviously I think it's just simply stigmatization. Yeah. Uh, so the reality is that there is poverty. 60% of the population, 40% of the population living in the urban area without jobs. And there is all cross-border movements of people. So without doubt, you will find that crime is there. And how do you handle it? Well, first, you must ensure that there is security, but the solution is also providing development that will absorb people into productive work. So the two must be combined. But more than ever, when we ensure that we build up a spirit in people of unity, of one can be one nation, one people, then you also create hope in people. And the example is really the coalition and the transition. Just look at those days and the vacuum in the country and you did not have any looting. 
because something was motivating people, something was inspiring people. So I believe that we need to create a country where we inspire people, even though they are poor, they must be respected and inspired and then given hope that there is a solution to the problem. So my conclusion is that, well, I remember what the example I give to people is that people say that people were so afraid of Jamia that they were not actually uh, protesting and this, well, I believe that that's real exaggeration. I remember St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. Mighty demonstration with stoning and destruction of many, many uh, structures there. But it was a skillful way of handling it that quieted everything. I remember many demonstrations, President Our scheme, they marched to the bridge, eventually arrested, taken to, to court, but eventually it just died down. So I believe the person who was there also, like Kato, you know, arresting them and eventually, you know, releasing them. And uh, so he was also very skillful in handling some of these issues to the point that people felt that he was so much in absolute control that nobody dared to say this or nobody dared to say that. I don't think that was also a correct story that nobody dared to do this and say that because many, many things, many skirmishes here and there happened in, in that country. He, he was just handling it in, the, in, in a way that makes people not to see that he was weak. So it is very important for the borough administration to begin the process of, in our school system, in the community, involving the children, and also we are part of it. <coughs> we must take part in involving the young people, in associations, in, in, in projects, in activities, to divert their attention from, from frustration. So there is absolutely no doubt that all of us must begin the project of really making the people, especially the young people, to matter and start to really involve with them, engage with them, and give them hope that they are somebody. I think that will help us a great deal in minimizing the use of the drugs, etc., and of course, the break-ins that we've mentioned. Thank you very much, Honorable Vassala. And uh, we have been hearing so many communications over your party, including yourself. And I have also overheard you saying that you are not interested in being a president. And we really want you to be a president. And we are now thinking, are you going to change your mind in the future? to be the president of the government because how things are going over there is not going good. Justice is still lacking. So the judiciary system also is weak. So the, the bottom line to the whole situation is that rule of law still is not existing in the government. And uh, we want to have somebody like you to be in that position to lead the government nation okay. and take us from this era. My name is Tenbo Chow. Sure. Thank you. Well, I think we must know where we are and where we are going. We've moved from a situation where we, we are no longer in charge of the Gambia as a people. And now we are in charge as a people. But then we need a government that can make the policies that will move us further to have prosperity and greater liberty. That will require constitutional changes. It will require institutional changes. It will require policies, it will require different projects. <clears throat> All that will require principles and knowledge. Because if you have to make a decision, you can make a decision 
that serves the interests of the people or a decision that serves the interests of Josephine. So it is important that we as Gambians now unite and then continue to guide the government, criticize it when it is wrong, point out what is right, so that at least we build a foundation from which we can rely on to move forward. Now, in terms of leadership, from my own perspective, I continue to emphasize that we should not have any leader who has ambition to be a leader. That leadership should be a duty that you are charged to do because people feel that you are in a better position to do it. And if you are to do it, don't stay too long. Because you should be able to prepare others to continue. So there is absolutely no doubt that when it comes to leadership of the state, it is important that it falls in the hands of people whom we are confident can move the nation forward. I was a presidential candidate. I did not refuse to be a presidential candidate of my party. But we wanted regime change. And that would not have been possible until we accept one person to be the presidential candidate. So you have to know what you want. Now, in the future, I cannot predict that I will be the presidential candidate because we do have primaries in our own party to select presidential candidates. And in three years, we cannot actually say that a Gambian will not emerge who may be more dedicated than me, who may be more aware than me, who may be more charismatic, who may be the choice of the people. So I can only say that I am always ready to serve my country. It's a duty that I can do and I can, and can serve. But I cannot express an ambition that I want to be this. What my ambition is, is to serve my country. If I fail to be its president, well, let me be the type of person who have done my best for the country and then disappear from the face of the earth knowing that I've done my best. That's good. That's good. How they maltreat us. So we need help for that because we miss Gambia. We pack our things and they open it and they steal it. Sometimes they take you in the room and say, Open your things, and they call you outside and they take your things. I think it's not right. So we need help for that. Please. Thank you. Well, I believe that this is the need that we have. We said that we are all sovereign Gambians. It means that those who serve us must see us as very important personalities. But that is an education that the government must do now. I can guarantee you that we are going to play our part. These things will go into the GRTS as an issue, as a debate, you know, so that at least we start to shape the thinking of those people who are rendering those services, that they should really keep up and put up the image of the country. Education should also be given in terms of what the tax system is in the Gambia and all, and what type of tax holiday can be given. All these things are issues that should be negotiated so that we know what is the law, what is not the law, what is proper, what is not proper, so that we help each other to do 
what will help all of us. I think that is important. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we are going to begin that conscientization, that education, so that all those who serve the country will know that they are serving the people, very important people, who determines who the leadership of the country is. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Salah. My name is Alajindu. Okay, is it okay now? Yeah. I just want to, to express how happy we all are for having you here. And to also say that these past three days or four that we have been together, it's a it's a very has been a very learning exp experience for me personally. But my questions are going to be about um, the electoral system that we have in Gambia. If there are any plans to change them, and how are they going to be changed? Because I'll give an example here in Denmark or in Scandinavia, we have um, a proportional representation where it means that almost. There is no um, vote that is lost because you find that in Gambia you have two people standing or three people, and two, what, you have maybe somebody who has 12 votes and the other has 10 votes, and then the, major, the one who has the more votes gets everything, and then it means that all the 10 votes are not represented at all. So I think that there is an issue that should be taken up and see if there is anything can be done about it. And another thing is also about the laws that we have in Gambia now. That anybody can go to Gambia, for instance, and thinking that you are free because it's the new Gambia we have, and then you may do something because of the bad laws that are still pending, they are still there, and then you might be in trouble and taken in, just like this lady who was uh, taken in and because they said that she has insulted the president. You know, those kind of laws, I think they should be. And how, how fast are they going to be taken out anyway? That, those are my questions. Thank you very much, sir. Well, obviously, those laws should have been reviewed as quickly as possible constitutional reform as quickly as possible so that it can be the starting point because the instrument is the starting point of building a new society. Of course, there are already discussions taking place, conferences being held in terms of constitutional reform, legal reform. What you said about electoral reform is absolute must. One, you can see the constituencies are unequal. And there's a constituency boundary commission that is not established because the act has not been developed. In 2000, Tillewa Johnson, Reverend Tillewa Johnson, demarcated the constituencies, but he was removed. So it is important to start from there and act that will either give back the IEC the responsibility of demarcation of constituencies or establish a boundaries commission. Number two, as you have said, women are complaining that even if you stand in a constituency, you are disadvantaged. So proportional representation is the best way of ensuring that you have a balanced national assent. And that is done by having a percentage, which is the base percentage. And once you have the percentage, you have a list, male, female, male, female, male, female. So if your percentage entitles you to six seats in the National Assembly, three will be males, three will be females. Yes, you can balance the National Assembly through that. And one believes that the women population will really be at the forefront in demanding for the introduction of proportional representation, even if not for all the seats, at least for maybe 60% of the seats, and 80% of the seats, and then the 20% can be to direct force past the post constituency election. 
That is absolutely essential. Uh, to change an electoral system would require just what you are doing. The political parties, civil society, all agree that the system needs to change. But we have an inter-party committee which will be meeting and obviously we propose as opposition for electoral reform and that should be in the agenda the voting of enfranchisement of the diaspora the transformation of the type of uh, election we have and ensuring uh, the second round of voting for presidential elections the absolute majority principle all these are issues that are in the making for electoral reform Is that, I think yes. I've answered it. But I just hope that you follow it up when you get back. So yes, it will be followed up, and you also must force us to follow it up by continuing to come up with your petition and demand for especially matters that deals with your own constituency and franchisement of the diaspora. That's an absolute must. I have uh, two questions here from, yeah, from the same person, and the first one is like is uh, asking about um, why the the, the the post of the vice president is still not is still vacant, um, and there are many people in Gambia who, who can have that post. <coughs> and then the next one is 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 um, the question to you about yeah, Gambia's assets. Do you think it was, they should not be seized, for example? And what do you think we, we, should, we should do to the, the damage he has done into the Gambia? Yeah, yeah, James assets. What are his assets? Yeah. <laughs> you see, this, this is the problem, you know. If you don't declare assets, no one will know that you have assets. So, the process of governance is that nobody can be a presidential candidate unless you declare your assets. So it is left to the borough government to say that I have suspicion and I have seen that certain assets declared by the former president has this and this and this problem from your own thinking as a president. Or you come and say, I'm taking over newly. I'm going to follow the former president. Now I will start by going to the IEC and find out what assets he declared. And if there are assets he has not declared, then those assets no longer belong to him. So we'll look at those assets and find out what is what. But the situation is confusing. It is the government that must come up with a policy on the representatives who served the former government. First and foremost, the president must come up and declare to the Gambian people that AU, EU, uh, AU, uh, ECOWAS and the United Nations had told me this but now my attitude is that towards this former uh, uh, representative from the president now this is my policy now to them and tell the nation so that the nation will understand that what I want now is for asset declaration by the former uh, representative of the government and when they declare their asset well, you look at their asset and see whether you want to go further. Whether you're going to find out where they got the assets, etc., etc. Uh, that is left to the government to decide through commissions of inquiry. But what I heard is that there is a commission of inquiry looking into the dealings of, uh, of former, gov former government in terms of the public enterprises. Some public enterprises when the right procedure is to audit those public enterprises and whatever you find to be wanting, you find out who had depleted those resources and you pursue the resources belonging to the public enterprises. But I do not see that happening. So 
we are, we are just, I'm just observing the government working. So it is not for us to say seize. You know, it's to say rule of law should, you must take the rule of law principle, take the rule of law principle, and then whatever the president finally decides, he decides. So that is my answer. My answer is not about seizing or not seizing. That's not the issue. The issue is clearly indicating what you intend to do. If it is, let them declare the assets, let them declare the assets. And then you may find out that something that they have not been declared, uh, you may say, well, then that does not belong to you, and then it is left for them to explain how it belongs. <laughs> you know, these are issues that are very simple, that are being made very complex. And, uh, well, but this is the government. That's the way the government in terms of do things. Don't judge me. Judge the government based on what it is doing. What me, what I have said is, what is the property of the people has been transferred. And the duty of the government is to audit those public enterprises and the government assets known. And then whatever is missing, they will know and pursue it because it's government property so that it get back into government coffers. That's, that's my position. If they have other positions, then in terms of the land too, that's what I've said. There is a land commission already established by law. Why not appoint the, 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 the people who should uh, constitute the commission? And anybody who has land dispute, if you feel that somebody with strong might had taken your land, Go to, and, and, and to the Lands Commission and, and, and seek justice. That's, that's, that's what I feel. Sorry for the, the information. Uh, in 25 minutes, that will be 9 o'clock. We will be wrapping the, the conference. Uh, uh, okay. in, ter in terms of the appointment of a vice president, well, clearly, I think everybody knows what happened. At the time when I was uh, the spokesperson of the president, that's the when Jamme departed. Everybody saw me. I gave a press conference and announced the name of the person he appointed vice president. And that was because of the provision that I have mentioned that in the absence of the president, the vice president should um, assume office. And in the absence of a vice president, the speaker should assume office. And at that time, there was no vice president, and Jami had gone. And where was in, in Dakar. If anything happened to him, the speaker of the National Assembly at that time was the APR, APRC speaker. So he was asked at that time to quickly appoint the vice president. And he appointed the vice president. I announced it. A lot of information came that the person is above 65 years. I went back, read section 70 of the Constitution, indicated that the person who is to be appointed, of course, must be the person who has the same qualification as the president, and said that he is going to review the situation and come up with a verdict. That's what I said then. Well, of course, uh, that passed, and up till now, the post is not filled. Of course, the post of vice president should be filled. Yeah. Because it's the vice president on the section 77 of the constitution who represents the president in the National Assembly. So it is it is it is absolutely a must for the president to, 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 to fill the post. But he's the one to explain why he has not done so. Normally we are supposed to be finishing at 8 o'clock, but we are almost one hour ahead of the, the away away from, from the schedule. But we will try to, if it is okay, we'll just keep it for the next 20 minutes and then we'll yeah. But most of the list that I have for people who are asking questions is almost finished. So I'm just going to read some, some, some questions here. Yeah. Someone asked, oh, I think Ramo also asked the same thing, about the security at the airport. Why they harassed them. Gambians traveling in and out of uh, Banjul, whereas the the the, the, the two so white white people are going free. Are going free. So they have equal problems as well. Uh, I can assure you that. Well, that that there's something that has been there for ages. 
It's not, not, yeah. it, it doesn't matter if you're Danish, you're Swedish, you're Norwegian, you're Gambian, it's all the same. Well, yes, that's what you call uh, a culture in administration. We call it normative practice. That has to change. When you change a system, you change the instruments, you change the institutions, you must also change behavior. You must change the practice. You must change the norms of administration. So this depends on, we are discussing it and that's what we must continue to do. You don't change normative practices without people exposing what is wrong, talking about it until it becomes, that also becomes the norm. That's why Gambians must not go to sleep again. <laughs> when, you, when you say these things, I will say it there. But let's get concrete examples of what is happening and then know also all the rules, etc. in terms of materials to be bought. I think a lot of education needs to be done to know the system, criticize the system if we feel that it's not just, and criticize people if they fail to adhere to the system and push towards system compliance. That, that is absolutely essential. We must have a system and people must comply with the system. Okay, let, uh, let, him, uh, let me be the last. Uh, my name is uh, yeah, uh, Pa, and they call me Dobo. So my question, uh, you said that it was in control before the economic intervention. Yeah. So we um, we are wondering if uh, the former president took with him um, any asset. If he does, if he uh, does take uh, this asset. We know that uh, before he was in power, he came up with uh, nothing, absolutely. Yeah. So, if you does, if you can explain what was the agreement for letting him uh, go with uh, those assets. And uh, my other question is, uh, if you become a president someday, would you uh, give him amnesty? Never. Yeah, it is important to bear in mind that you are not talking about people leaving him to take something. He was in power. That's what you should bear in mind. And he had. Baro was in Dakar. <laughs> The, the president of the Gambia was in Dakar because he was still in power controlling the might of the state. And there were negotiators dealing with him directly and communicating with President Barrow in Dakar. And those negotiators are the only people who can tell you what they had done to facilitate for him to depart. What we have read is their, uh, uh, the statement they issued, and what they issued in that statement is that he has agreed that to go if his properties will be respected and if his people will also be protected. That was the statement. But the statement was not signed by President Barrow, which means that it's not contractual. It is just... Uh, 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 it is like a gentle person's agreement between him and the negotiators, and he left. Do you understand that part? And he left. So for us, leaving is what we were waiting for in order to know that now President Barrow was not just a president by declaration, that he was now a president in reality, that the country was in his hands. Do you understand that part? Yeah. Now, the country being in his hands, the first thing to do is to ensure that what we are going to entrust him with 
is secure. That's where you secure all the public corporations and enterprises and see that the people who are managing it will now be accountable for whatever happened thereafter. Hmm? So we are saying that in the Gambia, there was no looting, no destruction of papers, etc. So whatever may have happened, if you do proper auditing, you'll be able to discover what happened, you'll be able to discover who took what. You understand that part? Yes. Okay, so that is the situation. Yeah, and uh, if you become a president someday... Yeah. What you must bear in mind is that all Gambian citizens are Gambian citizens and no one can deprive them of citizenship or being in the Gambia. But if you have done something, something can also be happen to you. Now is the borough government that must work out the relation between it and the former president. What is going to happen? And thereafter, if you ask me what should have happened at this time, you will say that a person who is a Gambian citizen has a right to return to the Gambia. When you say amnesty, you cannot grant amnesty without a legal process because it's not you. It is not you. It is the people who are victims, who must go through a process. And after the process is complete, this is when you can talk about general amnesty. Now the process is truth and reconciliation. It is finding out what happened. And then when you know what happened, then amnesties may follow. It all depends on the situation as to the victims and what will help those victims. It's what is important is to know that it is not you being victim, being uh, vindictive. It is not also you being uh, a person who will merciful. It is the victim who still has souls and who you must go through a process. And when the process is really complete, you can see what happened in South Africa. Eventually, you know, truth and reconciliation solve the problem. And people continue to live in peace. That, that, that's, that's, that's the way of the world. You look at Jerry Longnitz in, 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 in Ghana, it was a different situation. He did not resist. Now, if Jamie did not resist, maybe it would be a different situation. I'm just simply saying, these are not issues that you say black and white, this is what should happen. It is all situational. What is important is have a leader who is thinking in a mature way, who is thinking in a way that everybody will know this is the right thing to do at the right time. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me use the opportunity, although my questions, time doesn't allow me to raise my questions, but I have four questions. But let me uh, just take one uh, about his party. What he said before, I, I, I challenge him. I still I did not agree with him. Still. Okay. Uh, Honorable Mr. Sala, uh, welcome you in Denmark. Uh, nice to see you and uh, thank you for uh, being here. And uh, my question is that it's about your party. PDOYS is a party that is a unique party in Gambia. I can say that. It's a party with organization. And uh, you have been, we have been active for so long, so many years. And uh, we, the Just Forum, definitely we wish you to be in the coalition active the way you were active when President Barrow was in Senegal. But when you are not in the government, as ministry, both as what you mentioned, uh, we have an, a doubt because it's on. Matured, I can see it's on matured government, and uh, we can see the the, the beginning of the uh, cabinet's uh, setups and the judiciary system and uh, the legislature of the House of the Parliament. But though uh, we are aware that things is slow and uh, things doesn't go according to we we wish, uh, Mr. Sala, you said that you ha you you have to be neutral. You don't need to take post, but you have been saying this for so many years. And uh, of 
course, you're getting old, my uncle. And uh, we wish you to be in one of the ministry, definitely. All of the Jasperan wish you to be active, really. I'm not going to be. I don't want you to be. Yes, let me. Let me. Let me. I have a reason. I have a reason. I have a reason. I have a reason what I say so. Okay, for you. The House of Parliament is driven by percentage votes. And the majority, he knows the majority. And his concern in the parliament, he can enlighten them. But it's not so effective. That's, that's my point. He understands what I said. And PDOIS are not active in the coalition, and they said it's a coalition by a party. Uh, that's that was my question. Let me cut it short here. Thank you. Let me answer. 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 Let me answer that there should be a vice president. And there are members of cabinet who are there who are aware that there should be a vice president. But the president has still not selected a vice president. Now, if I was there, what should I do? Just accept the president not appointing a vice president, then I just continue yeah. to have two transports and have all the joys of a minister and just continue and just observe the president? No. Or should I resign? Resign. Resign. Yeah, this is the problem of being in a cabinet when you know that sometimes you can give an advice and the person does not take it, then what do you do? So therefore, uh, you are talking about being a minority in the National Assembly but you are also a minority in the cabinet. And that you are also under a president who can fire you, who can appoint you. So what authority do you have to influence that president? You can only advise, nothing more. So therefore, taking your logic, definitely it will not make sense to be in a cabinet when you know fully well that the type of society that you are trying to build is not the type of society that that cabinet can build at the moment because the cabinet is a transitional cabinet and anybody in that cabinet who agrees that the type of society you want to build the cabinet cannot build that should not really prefer to be in that cabinet so if those who prefer to be there they believe that well, they can build the type of society they prefer to build you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So that, that is the issue. So there's no problem being in or out, but, but you know, being in and then having to resign because some of your uh, suggestions have not been given, they will just see that, well, you are there defying the president, you are creating problem. So when you leave, they will just insult you that you are a troublemaker in the cabinet. Hmm? I think you've seen, even when I was spokesperson, I was... The, Somebody drove me from the yeah. from the position, even though, of course, the person did not have power. Just, I'm just joking, you know, because they have, those people have high respect for me. But I'm just saying that there is no need when you uh, have the uh, the majority that we have to go and engage in certain things that are squabbles. I think we we are beyond that. Thank you, uh, Jack. I think that is time is gone, so time is gone. I would like to say thank you so much for yeah, it's, it's been the pleasure of having you. Do 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 Thank you.
Yeah. 